kids love the digital world. Apps, games, and pure fun. But there's just one problem. Data. Commercial organizations are gathering more data from children now than ever before, and this has real consequences. My name is Anirudh, and I'm a researcher at the University of Oxford. Together with my colleagues, Jen and Max, I've been investigating the mobile ecosystem to understand some of its privacy problems. In this video, we'll give a quick overview of what we learned so far. The Google Play Store hosts over tens of thousands of free apps, specifically designed for children, offering great opportunities for education and connecting people around the world. However, the question is, how is all of this free? Something American Congress wondered as well. Well, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. Service providers such as Google and Facebook, as well as developers, rely on targeted advertising to generate revenue. To make this possible, mobile apps collect large amounts of sensitive data through third-party libraries, posing a major risk to privacy. This can lead to concrete harms for children, such as identity theft, as well as pose risks to their reputation and opportunities as they grow older. All of this makes us wonder about the role of developers. After all, they're the ones creating the apps, and in a way, this would make them responsible. So we wanted to find out, what do developers think their responsibilities are when designing for children? And what is preventing them from creating age-appropriate apps, which do not lead to long-term harms? In order to answer these questions, we decided to ask developers directly through surveys and interviews. We sought out developers by going through apps on the Google Play Store, which were categorized under the family and education genres. The survey and interview included similar open-ended questions to capture developer views on data collection practices and their development methods. We received 134 survey responses and conducted 20 interviews. Audio recordings were transcribed and all qualitative data was analyzed using thematic analysis. So what did we discover? Here, we'll give a quick overview of the most important themes, with the rest being described in the full paper. Our findings show that in general, developers feel responsible for designing apps with the best interests of children in mind. As one developer puts it, the app interacts with the kid during a very sensitive period. We bear much more responsibility for the user. And the same applies to respecting children's privacy and minimizing data collection. However, developers also had several needs and goals which could only be realized through the use of certain analytics and third-party libraries. For example, the need to further understand user behaviors to improve the app. At the same time, developers expressed to want to do this in a non-harmful way and reported to not collect personal data from users and share them with third parties. In wanting to design with the best interests of children in mind, developers face several challenges, out of which we'll be covering the most prominent ones. Firstly, developers found it unclear what third-party libraries are doing in the background and what organizations might secretly be doing with the collected data. This made it difficult for them to navigate the libraries available on the market. As a result, developers resorted to using products from known organizations. Unsurprisingly, libraries used by Google turned out to be the most popular. Another struggle developers faced was the monetization of apps. Understandably, sustaining a viable business was one of the primary objectives for developers. After all, money makes the world go around. However, attempts to do this in an age-appropriate way without using ads and trackers was not easy. Firstly, paid apps which did not use any ads had a hard time competing in the competitive app marketplace and simply did not earn enough money. Secondly, oftentimes users themselves demanded for apps to be free by leaving bad ratings as they often couldn't afford paying for them. And lastly, Paid apps also faced the problem that clone makers would simply duplicate the app and release a free version with potentially malicious features. At the end of the day, developers had to concede that ads are a necessary evil to keep the business afloat. The question remains, however, what can we do about all of this? Unfortunately, there is no trivial solution to these problems, and we may need to rethink our current economic model. In the meanwhile, what will really help is industry support and alternative monetization methods. For example, in 2019, Apple restricted all third-party advertising and analytics for kids. For data tracking to come to an end, the Google Play Store will need to push for similar policies. However, this is unlikely to happen, as Google relies strongly on the advertising industry for their revenue, which is not the case for Apple. As for alternative monetization methods, this is not easy either. Asking developers to offer premium versions of their apps comes with a problem that can lead to digital exclusion, meaning that marginalized groups will have to suffer from reduced privacy. All of this means that to improve the mobile ecosystem, the HCI community has a big role to play. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can have a look at our paper. We couldn't cover everything in this video. For example, in the paper, we do a full analysis of data protection frameworks and describe more challenges faced by developers. Do reach out to us if you have any questions. We hope you enjoyed and thank you for listening.